Dallas is back. It's been quite a while. Were you guys right. excited to see it come back or a little bit apprehensive at all? Yes. The answer is yeah. I mean, we're very excited to have it come back because it deserves to come back. And apprehensive because if it failed, if mm. it was done badly, uh, that's what we'd be known for, as having destroyed a television icon in terms of a show. So yes is the answer to both questions, but it is good. It's not bad. We haven't destroyed it, and I hope it goes on forever. You know your character so well. Right. Um, did you feel like you had a sense of ownership when coming back to kind of maybe talk to the newer writers and the newer directors about where your character was and where you thought he'd be by now? No, and, and uh, because I am not a writer and um, I never assume that position on the show. I never have in, for, from the very beginning. Um, the nice thing was I didn't have to worry about that once I read the pilot. Mm -hmm. I knew that they understood mm -hmm. that character. I didn't have to tell them anything. Mm -hmm. The nice thing is that uh, our writers and our producers are so confident in, in themselves and their work that if something doesn't fit in your mouth as a character, you can go to them and say, can you change that line? Mm -hmm. Can it sound more like that? And they go, absolutely, and they mm -hmm. make it work. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a nice uh, coalition of actors and writers and directors mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. producers that all want to do the right thing. It's a very collaborative um, That's set. That's the word I was looking for. It's a very for. collaborative set, both uh, on camera and behind the camera. Right. Um, Cynthia likes to say that the writers get along as well as the actors do, and that's very rare because we actually have a very unique family in that mm -hmm. um, we all get along. And I know that sounds trite, but it's so rare in this industry that I think we're so celebratory of yeah. it. Mm -hmm. um, well, and when the, the scene is over, nobody goes to their dressing rooms. Everybody gathers in their chairs in a little tight circle and laughs and uh, plays games with each other and then it's time to go to work again. So it's not like everybody disappears, mm -hmm, which mm -hmm. they do on a lot of shows. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you escape. But mm -hmm. we, we want to be together. So you've developed mm -hmm. like a family Absolutely. kind of atmosphere between That's the cast and crew, which is fantastic. Now, a question for you, Brenda. Yes. Your character is the third wife to, to Bobby. Third time's the charm. <laughs> so I was going to ask, were you, is your character a little bit worried at all, maybe? <laughs> that he's well, a bit of a ladies' man? Um, oh, you know, no. I, I think she has a healthy respect that Bobby has a history, um, and she's certainly not trying to fit into any of the shoes of the previous wives. However, um, she definitely has, a, has an awareness, um, and it was, a, it was an exciting challenge for me to have, to be able to measure up and also create something brand new for mm -hmm. myself uh, with him. And I think, as he said so beautifully, you know, Bobby is very much the character that you know and love, but there is now um, a, a quiet dignity. There is now a, a patriarchal kind of substance to Bobby that, that heretofore wasn't there. And so Anne had to match that. And so I'm very happy to be able to create a character um, that is the, the equal to this man right. because he stands with such substance. And so it allows me to create a woman that's strong and loyal and kind hearted and um, is, is the integral match to him and at the same time has a history and isn't, you know, a, a, a eyelash batting young innocent. I mean, she definitely is a woman and, um, and I, I've been really uh, enjoying getting to know her as, as, I, as I build this character from the ground up and learning who she is through, through his history. But Bobby is fiercely monogamous. As is Anne. Yeah. So that. One I final question about the, the twists and turns of, of the plots of Dallas. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, your character, Bob, you're now in charge of the, of the Ewan estate. Right. Um, do you think, are we going to see more spats between yourself and Jay? And will your children now get involved as well? I think absolutely. Uh, I didn't think of it in this way until I heard Brenda talk about it earlier, is that without the, the adult family members like Jock and Miss Ellie there now, it's up to us to try and figure out who is the rightful heir to all of the South Fork legacy, to mm -hmm. all of the Ewing name stuff. And that is generational because the young guys mm -hmm. want it also. Mm -hmm. They want to, to establish their birth rights, mm -hmm. you know, and in my son's case, his, at least his family rights because he is adopted. So there's all of that intrigue all the time and nobody to uh, tap you on the shoulder with the sword and say you are the heir apparent because they're gone. So that's a con gonna be a constant conflict in the show, mm -hmm. absolutely. Fantastic, well, yeah. we're, very much looking forward to seeing it again. It's been fantastic to, yeah. to know that it's coming back. So thank you so much for spending your time with us today. Oh, my pleasure. pleasure. Hope you enjoy London and if the weather well, gets better. This obviously. room is terrific, I want to tell you. No, but it's so nice to be in the city in such a celebratory state. Yeah. You know, I was out last night going to theater and everyone, and, and we went to see Chariots of Fire, which is such a celebration of the Olympics and the history of the Olympics mm. with Great Britain. So it's, it's nice to be here now right. in particular. Fantastic. And I got to meet Jessica Ennis. It was so cool.